I'm gonna be going over five different lies that wholesalers will tell you when you're working with them on a real estate investment transaction. Now, I don't wanna like paint a horrible picture and, and say all oh, wholesalers are bad because there are some really good wholesalers. And I'm also gonna talk about like how to work the best practices when it comes to working with wholesalers and also finding great deals from wholesalers. I just purchased two deals in the past few months from wholesalers. So there are definitely ways you can work with them. However, there's also some, some things you need to avoid or actually look out for when it comes to working with them. So number one, you know, why would someone even wholesale a deal to begin with? Well, I actually got started as a wholesaler in the real estate investing industry. I even wrote a little book about wholesaling. And if you're new to real estate and real estate investing, you don't have a lot of experience, you don't have a lot of cash, but maybe you know, you're, you're, you're a hustler, you're out there, you're trying to find deals. Well, a great way to get started in real estate investing is wholesaling because you can do marketing, you can lock up a property under contract, let's say for 100,000, and there's tons and tons of investors out there, tons and tons of cash buyers who are looking for deals just like that, like off-market distressed deals that have some profit margin in there. And you can assign the rights, you know, if you have it under a contract for 100,000, maybe you sign the rights for 105, 110. I mean, there's the, I've even heard of, you know, six-figure wholesale deals and, um, you know, even multi-six-figure wholesale deals for that matter. I say the standard is probably maybe 10 to 20,000. Uh, but it just depends on the deal. And myself, when I was getting started, I didn't have the you know the capital to like fix up a house, or in some case, I didn't even know what I was doing with the house. I just knew, hey, if these ones sell for three hundred and I have it under contract for this price, probably a good deal for somebody. So that that's really why you would even wholesale it to begin with. And it's always it's a part of pretty much every single industry out there. Now, one thing to keep in mind in different areas, it is becoming more um, restrictive with the wholesale. They're they're doing different laws to restrict wholesaling because a lot of wholesalers, uh, it sounds bad, are more like unsophisticated investors. There are some very extremely savvy wholesalers, but wholesaling has kind of gotten a bad reputation over the last few years, just because there were some investors doing some things that um, weren't exactly, probably weren't exactly legal uh, or ethical and various other things. So you should always check your county's uh, regulations on it because they're always changing. I know in some areas um, they're requiring wholesalers to get a license now. And that, that's going to lead me to you know the five different lies that uh, wholesalers will tell you when you're looking at a wholesale deal. With that being said, it can be a great source whether you're an agent or an investor. It's basically free leads from a wholesaler. If you get signed up on a wholesaler's list, they'll send you off-market deals. Which in this market, you know, buyers are always looking for off-market deals, and this could be a great opportunity for you to look really good, or even if you're an investor, to you know, to purchase them. I, I purchase deals from wholesalers all the time. So the first lie that wholesalers will tell you is that uh, the property only needs you know a certain amount of work. I mean, pretty much every deal, and I'm gonna go through a wholesale deal just um, towards the end of this video, just to show you a perfect example. But wholesalers will often say, oh, you know, the property only needs $20,000 worth of work, 50,000, even 100,000. And usually they're completely off. That's not to say every wholesale deal is bad, but the majority don't really put the time and effort to really like, do a full scope of work and say, okay, the roof, you know, electrical, plumbing, bathrooms, paint, everything like that. Most wholesalers, if you've ever gotten wholesale deals, which I'm sure you have, you know, they'll take a few photos of the house and uh, they'll say, you know, hey, rehab budget, you know, 25K. And you know, what, what is 25K? You can spend 25K easily on just the landscaping a lot of times uh, for different, I've, I've spent like 50K on landscaping in one house because there's a lot of junk that I had to remove. And that's a whole other story. But the bottom line is you should take every wholesaler's estimate with a grain of salt. Do your own estimates. Really, uh, I have a scope of work on my website, which you can download for free. Uh, but you really want to map out you know, the full, the full scope of work. And then you want to add like 10 or 20%. If it's a big rehab in an older house, you definitely want to add you know, 15 or 20% to your estimated budget. Because once you get into a big project, there's always things that you're going to find. The next lie that wholesalers will tell you is that you can sell the property for you know a million dollars or whatever their price is. A lot of times they might choose like one or two comps and they might not even be in the same neighborhood. They might be like a three level house and then the house you're looking at is a two level, but they'll still throw those in there. And when you're a brand new investor, that can be very tempting because I remember when I was a new investor, every wholesaler was like sending me deals and I was like, oh my God, this is an amazing deal. And then this is an amazing deal. This is so good. You gotta buy every house. Like what, like this is incredible. However, once you really dig into the numbers and really look at the after renovated values, oftentimes they're completely incorrect. And don't get me wrong, there are some very good wholesalers out there that will give you correct numbers, uh, but there's a lot of wholesalers, whether they're doing it you know, maliciously or not, sometimes they just don't, they, they might just not know. Uh, and other times they might kind of you know, inflate it a little bit if it's a hot market. 
Um, so you really need to you need to run your own costs. You need to find like three or four after renovated values uh, that can support the price. If there's just one property that sold renovated, unless it's like exactly the same and like in the same neighborhood and everything else is the same, you know that that's really not good enough. The next thing some wholesalers will tell you is that you know the price is firm or not negotiable or they have other buyers and partners lined up and whatnot. And I would say this, look, I, I'm not like trying to bash wholesalers, but there's just so, there's a lot of bad wholesalers out there that will just tell you anything. There's some great wholesalers, you know, if you're watching this right now and I've worked with you before, you know, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the, we all know who the bad wholesalers are out there. And sometimes they'll just say things that just aren't true. Like they might say that there's partners and that there's other buyers and you kind of have to get a feel for it, but just take anything, it's, the wholesaling is kind of a gray area and there's not much if really any regulation over it. There's there's no like repercussions or anything for wholesalers. I mean, people can like talk trash about them in Facebook groups and online and whatnot, but there's no real like penalties of all. a wholesaler can pretty much run around and say whatever he wants or he or she, and there, there's no repercussions. So sometimes wholesalers will just say things that just aren't true at all. If they say they have other people that are going to make an offer, you know that may or may not be true. You have to get look look at what the similar properties have sold for. Do they sell quickly in that neighborhood? Like look at the days on market, that type of thing to really get a feel for it. The numbers really have to work for you. So don't be pressured if they try to do some like high pressure sales tactic, whether they're trying to use a sales tactic or not. Uh, don't, don't be pressured by that. Make sure the numbers really work for you. A lot of times people, people have told me this when I was first getting started in real estate investing. Sometimes the best deal you can do is the one that you don't do. And I actually had a deal where I got into, it was like a six or seven or even eight month rehab. And if I just wholesale that deal or even not did that deal or maybe just relisted it in as is condition without doing the renovations, I would have made so much more. I would have had no headache. It would have been so much better. Instead, I got involved with this deal. It took forever. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the rehab. And I thought the rehab came out nice, but looking back, I would have just sold it to another investor and you know, <laughs> gone on my way. The next lie wholesalers will tell you is that they are direct with the seller. Basically meaning they're they're like, you know, it's they have the contract with the seller. And, you know, in wholesaling, a lot of times you get these like weird daisy chains where other people are selling other people's deals for different prices. And I, I found in real estate, the more someone tries to convince you of something, like the less likely they are. Like I remember there's like companies uh, like trustworthy real estate and this and that. And it's it's always like the least trustworthy company you can you can think of. Or if you know, if someone tries to tell you they're the number one this or number one that. Oftentimes, there's some type of catch there. I mean, honestly, people shouldn't even have to say they're direct with the seller because if you're wholesaling a deal, you should be direct with the seller. You shouldn't be doing some daisy chain. There are people that do the daisy chains. It's funny. I actually had someone try to wholesale me my own deal. Uh. I, I was uh, I was partnering with someone and someone tried to wholesale me the deal I had under contract, which I thought was pretty funny. So there's these wacky daisy chains and people saying they're direct with seller, but just... You know, run your own numbers and just take everything a wholesaler says with a little bit of a grain of salt. The next lie that wholesalers will tell you, and this has happened to me directly multiple, multiple times. I, I don't know how many times. You will find a great deal. They'll be excited about it. You'll be excited about it. And uh, they'll even tell you, they'll say, you have the deal. Or they'll say, yeah, that works. You know, I'll send over the paperwork. And then a day goes by. And then another day goes by and you're kind of wondering what's going on. And then uh, you get a message saying, um, oh, sorry, um, we can't do the deal anymore or something along those lines. And, uh, you know, you, the, the deal will just fall apart after you basically had a confirmation. I just had this happen on a, actually it was a multi-unit property. And the wholesaler said, she, she said, oh, I don't want to do the deal anymore. I, I forget the reason. After you already agreed on it. Now, it wasn't in writing, so it's not like I could really enforce anything besides just say, hey, I'll never work with you again. And why would, you know. If you're going to give someone your word, you should give somebody your word. But that just goes back into the gray area of wholesaling where, you know, it's, it's kind of like the Wild West. It's, it's just like, you know, there's deals here and there flying around. And, you know, if you can if you can grab one, it's, it's good. And I'm about to show you, you know, some some ways to work with wholesalers. Um, but, you know, just just be careful when when you're listening to people and what they what they're saying. And, you know, you have to get things in writing for it to be official. It's like that quote that I guess it was Reagan that said it. Uh, Trust, but verify. Um, however, I think with wholesaling, it should be don't trust and then verify. <laughs> like I said, people are not always trying to screw you over or anything like that, but sometimes there's just people might get a little excited and not really know what they're doing. Uh, so you always have to verify everything. Now I'm about to show you an example wholesale deal actually from a pretty well-known company and just how completely off you know their numbers are. 
uh, even you know even from a well-known company. Uh, but before I do that, you know, because there are ways to work with wholesalers, the best way you can do is really just build a list of like 20, 30, 40 wholesalers. And you can find this, you can write down bandit sign numbers, you can look on you know LinkedIn, you can look in the Facebook groups. Uh, there's usually some top wholesalers in every neighborhood or every, every city for that matter. And maybe you just spend a day where you just get on every single buyer's list, right? And you're gonna start getting deals. You're gonna start getting off-market deals. You're gonna get free off-market deals every single, pretty much every single day if, if you sign up for enough lists. And they're not always gonna be great deals, but maybe you spend five or 10 minutes a day evaluating them. And if you do that over the course of a month and you get 50 or 60 off-market leads, um, you know, you really just need one to, to make your client really happy or to make you really happy if you purchase it, you know, as an investment. And despite me basically uh, trashing wholesaling <laughs> this entire video, there are some really good wholesalers out there. Um, they're, they're, they're people that can get you really good off-market deals. You know, try to build relationships and try to stay in touch with some of these people because you never know. All it takes is one deal to make a significant profit. All right, so I'm just going to show you an example wholesale deal where, it, you know, the numbers just aren't correct, right? <laughs> so, but it still could be a good deal for like maybe a retail buyer. There's still like some discounts to be had with wholesale, and sometimes you get amazing deals. I just bought a couple that had over 100k in equity. But for example, this let's we'll, we'll look it up real quick. 1628 Mount Eagle Place, <clears throat> Alexandria Townhome Condo, three bedroom. Gated community parquet floors, modest HOA fee of only six hundred dollars per month. <laughs> so you can buy it. So they want to sell it for three eighty five, which means they probably have it under contract for maybe three sixty, three seventy, maybe three fifty, three forty, maybe even three seventy five. Who knows? And the renovation is only forty k, which for a condo, yeah, you know, it's two levels. So we'll have to take a look. And ARV, they're saying it's five hundred k. They can sell it for. And you only have to put in 40,000. Okay. So let's see their comps real quick. So they said 500,000 is what you could sell it for. This one sold at 480. Uh, wasn't very nice. This one sold at 487. So there was one that did sell for 500. Usually what I like to do with these deals is, is run my own comps, uh, which you should also do. So the address 1628 Mount Eagle Place. I'm gonna put that in here. And because it's a condo, I'm gonna go back. Usually I only go back a few months. We'll just go back 300 days. And this was a three bedroom condo. So it's right there. So yeah, there should be some good comps here. So let's see. And when you're doing comps for a condo, you wanna have it uh, be in the same complex for the most part. You can't look at one condo building over there and then compare it to another condo building. It's not going to be the same. Yeah, this is a nice area, yeah, Park Fairfax. Um, okay. So I'm also just going to pull up the property so I know the square footage of it. All right, so here's the tax record. I always like, you know, you should trust but or don't trust it and verify. So uh, this is the 1100 square foot model, three bedrooms, one bath. So it looks like it's just like the the other ones that were uh, not that one, but there's several that are, yeah. So this this model right here is what we're looking for, right? So they said it would sell for 500K with 40K worth of renovations. So I'm gonna find all these models. So you really, like with condos, you really have to compare the same. Even this one, see, this one has an extra half bath. So I think they might've been using some of those comps. Um, so right now, these are the three comps I have. And they were giving me 500 as the after renovated value. So this one looks nice too. I mean, this one looks like it's been updated pretty nicely. Um, Oh uh, yeah, bathroom could use a little renovations, but nothing crazy. So I think 500 is kind of a stretch here. This one sold for 470. 
see if this one was nice. And they, they said it had the parquet floors. Yeah, this one's like pretty nice too. Let's check the bathroom. There's only one bathroom in these places, which is kind of unfortunate. That is a weird looking bathroom. Um, and then 420. Reno 40,000. Let's look at the photos to see what exactly would cost 40,000. Okay, so we're gonna assume there's parquet floors under here. So you gotta paint the entire place. That's about 5,000. Probably upgrade the bathroom a little bit. Um, let's call it 10,000. Um, this is also a lower level unit. So I, I need to, I think the other ones were as well. You need to do some landscaping. Um, got a lot of drywall work here, more painting. The windows probably need to be replaced. Kitchen, yeah, you probably need to replace the cabinets, appliances. Um, you know, their, their repair estimate, you might be able to get away with 40K, but I just don't think it's going to sell for 500. I think it's kind of a stretch. You know, it's not as bad as some wholesalers that you see that will just give you crazy numbers, but you can see, like, I'm not using 500K as my after renovated value. Maybe if I put like 60 or 70K in it, I'd be comfortable if there was enough margin. But th this, I, I don't think it's going to sell for 500. I mean, this market's been kind of crazy. So you could speculate and say, yeah, it might be worth it based on the way things are going, but you typically don't want to do that. So thanks for watching this video. And if you have any questions about working with wholesalers, drop them in the comment section below. Be sure to check out my other videos here and also subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.